Please open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. Today we'll be reading verses 6 to 13. If you are using the Pew Bibles, this will be found on page 1304. As we read today's passage, it's often, this passage is often considered the uh, apex or the uh, conclusion of uh, John's letter. So as we read, be sure to think back to the previous sermons, and I also want to encourage you to go and read the whole letter in its full context later today. Let's read the word of the Lord. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of man, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not, <clears throat> whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony, that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you open our hearts and our minds to the teaching of it. Let us be comforted by it. In Jesus' name, amen. What if you're wrong? Haven't you ever doubted? These were the unfortunate questions that a proclaimed believer I'd met with over spring break asked me. I would have been lying to him if I would have said no. Of course, I have doubted, just like many other believers have. But that doesn't make it right. In today's passage, John is writing to a church that's in a state of doubt. Teachings that come into the church that deny the divinity of Jesus Christ. It was causing the believers in the church to doubt their faith and even doubt their salvation. We are often faced with many questions ourselves not just from the outside, but from ourselves. We ask ourselves, what if I am wrong? What if God doesn't exist? What if there is no eternal life? What if I am following the wrong religion? For brothers and sisters, these are idle thoughts that have no place in our minds. As believers, we need to stand with confidence in the truth. But how? How can we stand with confidence? How can we know that Jesus is the Son of God? In today's passage, it is John's goal that you might know and be assured of these things that God has declared to you. And so first, brothers and sisters, I want you to be assured because this is the testimony, the sure testimony of God. And this testimony in today's passage, is being weighed against the testimony of men. In verse 10, or rather, verse 9, we read, If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. The teachings of these men that come to the church, that deny that Jesus was fully divine, we can see in verse 6, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. And John points out, not by water only, but by water and the blood. These men taught that Jesus was just a man, and that at his baptism, he, God decided he was worthy, and that the deity of Christ descended on him, making him divine. But for these false teachers, 
They said that before Jesus died, the divinity of Jesus, the divinity of Christ, left him. Because for these men, it was absurd for them to think that God would die on a cross. As believers, we know we need a divine Savior to atone for our sins. These men believed that what saved us was an internal light of an esoteric knowledge. But Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And those who follow me will have the light of life. But God's testimony is not just incomparable to testimony of false teachers, but it's also incomparable to testimony of the saints. John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is a great testimony. But Jesus says, the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. And the Father bears witness to these things as well. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, and The Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. And again, later, he says, I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness to me. In verse 10, we read, Whoever believes in the Son of God has a testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. These false teachers call God a liar. And how absurd is that? But brothers and sisters, it's even worse than that. These false teachers are condemned. In Gospel of John, Jesus says, Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And brothers and sisters, when we doubt, we are like these men. We bring judgment and condemnation upon ourselves. So God has testified. But how has he testified? In verses 7 and 8 we read, For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. John calls to mind the Old Testament law here, which says that for anything to be charged against someone, or for anything to be true, there needs to be two or three witnesses. And our first witness we're going to look at today is the water. And the water represents Christ's baptism, as we've mentioned earlier. Now, Christ's baptism is unlike any baptism that we have. This baptism is a ceremonial inauguration. It is the first thing that Jesus does in his ministry. It's to say that he is about to begin the work of the Lord. In the narrative for the baptism in Matthew's Gospel, we read, And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the testimony of the Father. But the blood testifies as well. And blood has testified from the beginning of time. If you look at the first murder of Cain and Abel, when God addresses Cain and asks him where his son, where Abel was, and Cain replies, am I my, my brother's keeper? God immediately replies, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Jesus mentions in the Gospel of Luke, as he speaks to the present generation, he says, The blood of all the prophets, shed from the foundation of the world, may be charged against this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the sanctuary. And there's no... The same goes for the blood of Christ. When you look at the crucifixion narrative in the Gospel of Matthew, we read... When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, 
They were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. And I want you guys to think about this for a second. This is the centurion and the soldiers who are with him. These men, more than likely, literally had the blood of Christ on their hands. They are the ones who beat him, persecuted him, put him on that cross, placed that crown of thorns upon his head. And at his death, they heard the testimony of God. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. Now this water and the blood, they represent the bookends of Jesus' ministry on earth. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing, bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. The whole life of Christ bears witness to his divinity. He is the Son of God. But brothers and sisters, these are the objective witnesses. They are the witnesses against all mankind, and all mankind are under this testimony. But for us as believers, there's a third witness, and that is the Spirit. And the Spirit is the internal testimony. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to be assured, because this testimony is in you. We read in verse 10, whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The Spirit is a gift of God for those who believe. It is a fountain of truth and it testifies to you day after day, hour after hour, that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus says in the Gospel of John, but when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. Again, he says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. When the high priest came to question the apostles, their teaching of the life of Jesus, and Jesus' ministry and his divinity and salvation that we have through him, they replied, the apostles replied, and we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to all those who obey him. As believers, we have a greater testimony. It confirms the word of the Lord. In Nietzsche's parable of the madman, he declares that God is dead. And the reason he says this is not just because of his own philosophical convictions, but because of the way that people were living around him. People weren't living like they had this amazing and assuring and personal knowledge of God or His Son. And to this day, that tends to remain to be the case. Many of you today may have heard this sermon and said, in my own mind, of course I knew that God, or that Jesus was the Son of God. Of course I knew He was divine. And we can argue from Scripture, time after time after time, how it reveals this to be true. But more often than not, it's just head knowledge. We know it up here, but it's not a personal and burning conviction in our hearts. We must not only be assured in our thoughts, but be assured in how we live our lives. We need to live a life that says, I know who the Son of God is, and I know the life that I have been given. Brothers and sisters, put off that dead man that drags you down into the pit of doubt. Hear the testimony of God and believe it with great joy. Don't settle for this is how I understand it or this is what I believe. But say with the conviction of the truth, this is how it is. Jesus is the Son of God and in Him and Him alone is their eternal life. Can you imagine a day when the church, the world over, could speak with that level of conviction? Can you imagine the conversions that could be brought through that? <coughs> Seek that day, brothers and sisters, and hear that glorious testimony. Be convicted and be assured that Jesus is the Son of God. That you might know, 
beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have received eternal life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son and for the testimony you've given to us about him. Let us live lives and show we truly believe it. Let us be convicted of this truth. And let us be witnesses to the world that we know who is our Savior. Let's go forth out from today into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's close by seeing Psalm 73C.